what you're looking at. You know, I ain't sure. Can I look? We well, yeah, sure enough can. Fester, I got one question. What's that? What am I supposed to be looking at? Well, don't you see nothing? Just trees. Huh. Funny, that's all I seen too. But I'm confused. About what? What I'm supposed to be looking at. Well, what happened was a while ago, heard this noise sound like wild animal come from them trees. I was just trying to see what it was. What kind of noise was it? Well, you know, if we hold real still, maybe we'll hear it. bobcat or bear like usual. All you heard was the wind hauling through the hauler. That's all? That's all. Well, what do you know about that? <laughs> what are y'all doing out here? Looking at them trees through them binoculars. <laughs> Why are you looking at the trees? Bester thought the wind was a wild animal. Faster thought the wind was a wild animal. Boy, I'm confused. Huh. Well, that makes four of us. <laughs> well, that makes three of us. <laughs> I'm gonna pretend like that conversation never even happened. By the way, have any of y'all seen my megaphone? Well, you know that old depend on what? What's a megaphone? You know, it's what the city cousins gave us last year. When we needed us something to help call the tater sack races with. Oh. You don't know what we're talking about, do you? Nope. <laughs> you know that thing, you put it up to your mouth, makes your voice louder. You know, Cousin Elkin, when you said you was confused a minute ago? Yep. Now it's my turn. <laughs> Master, you were born confused. <coughs> well, it's like this here funnel. You put it up to your mouth. It makes your voice really loud. You know, it's what Grandma uses to call us in for supper. <coughs> yeah. Brandon May, faster. Y'all wash up and come in for supper now. I might be 100 years old, but I can still cook a main possum roast. Oh, look, my pantyhose is all wrinkly. <laughs> oh, wait, I ain't wearing any pantyhose. <laughs> she, she, she's right behind me, ain't she? <laughs> hey, look, Taylor, you're making fun of your feeble old grandma. Oh, it sure was, grandma. You said your legs is greasy. Thanks for your support, Fester. I'll come out here and tell y'all to keep it down because I got a cake in the oven. Loud noises will make it fall. This hundred year old woman needs some peace on earth. Yes, ma'am. Well, where's my squirrel? I didn't see nary a squirrel one, Grandma. How am I supposed to make my fresh squirrel gravy for the annual Christmas Eve supper without a fresh squirrel to cook it with? I don't know. They all must be a hiding. Well, I'll sell for a rabbit for my rabbit stew. I didn't see no rabbits neither. Possum? Go. Deer? Disappear. Did you go hunting or for a nature walk? Yeah, I did. But I don't know, Grandma. It's like I must be losing my touch. I, it's all like all the animals in the woods done gone on a Christmas vacation. Hey, that's it. Maybe that wild animal I heard done scared all the critters off. What are you yapping about, Fester? Oh, Grandma, Fester's just confused. My customers will be expecting my fresh squirrel gravy and my rabbit stew for the annual Christmas Eve supper. They sure will be disappointed. La, la, la. Fester, I don't want to hear another thing about some wild animal in the woods. We have got to focus and help Grandma get ready for her Christmas supper. Come on, let's go. But, but uh, Elkin's right. Let's go, Fester. Mm -hmm. Oh, 
All right, watch your step now. Can I open my eyes yet? Just one second, we're almost there. <gasps> this is so exciting. All right, stand right here. Okay, give me your suitcase. I still can't believe you guys wanted to surprise me with a Christmas trip this year. I think I can guess where we are. We're in Paris, aren't we? I can tell by the cold air. How in the world would we be in Paris when we didn't even get on a plane? Right, then it's Aspen, Colorado. Not quite. On the count of three. One, two, three. Wait, don't tell me. Trees, cold air, outhouse, water, pup, old rundown diner, Pete. Yes? You did not bring me back here. Surprise! You did not bring me back out here again. Now, Mimi, we knew you wouldn't come if we told you we were coming out to Cricket County. You bring me to Cricket County? That does it. Hold on, we just got here. Just where do you think you're going? Let go of me! Now, Mimi. I told them it was a bad idea, Mimi. Yeah. She did. <laughs> <laughs> Pete, you wanna you wanna grab her suitcase so she doesn't just take off on us? Grab my suitcase and you'll draw back a nub, Mister. Now, Mimi, this was your idea. Yeah, don't you remember? You said I want to go somewhere where the air is crisp and clear and I can just sit and relax. Yeah. And, and I said, what about a trip to Cricket County? And you said, hey, that'd be great. Yeah, that never happened. Yep, it sure did. And I even recorded it. Come here. <laughs> Mimi, how would you like to go on a little trip? I'm dying to just go somewhere where the air is crisp and clear and I can just sit and relax. How about driving out to Cricket County? Cricket County? That sounds absolutely wonderful. <laughs> that conversation never happened. Petunia, what do you know about all this? It did sound like your voice to me, Mimi. There, see? <laughs> I'm confused. Don't be confused, just be glad that you're here. <clears throat> Besides, taking our trip out to Cricket County every year to get our hands on our hillbilly cousin's inheritance money has become a rich Christmas tradition. <laughs> it depends on what your definition of rich is. We come out here year after year and go home empty-handed every time. But it's the hope in our hearts of one day becoming multi-millionaires just trying to get a fraction of their inherited millions. Well, isn't that what Christmas is all about, Pete? Mm -hmm. Pete, Oswald, you two are really beginning to scare me. Face it, people. We're never going to get our hands on that money. If anyone needs me, I'll be in the limo. Hey, Sidica! Hello to you two. Is the coast clear? Uh, from what? Oh, wow. Terrifying. Hey, with a loud man. No, no, Mimi's right there. Oh. <laughs> oh, you guys are so funny. Boy, welcome back to Cricket County. Good to see you. Good to see you, city cousins. I'll get you all set up at the cabin a little later. Anything I can do for you in the meantime. Uh, Elkin, uh, speaking of your inheritance. Pete, stop. Elkin, we're fine for now. Thank you. And Mimi, you are not sleeping in the limo. Oh, what a tangled web we weave when we first practice to deceive. What's wrong with cousin Mimi? Uh, she, she thought we were in Paris. 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 Oh, you mean as in Tennessee? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Paris, Tennessee. <laughs> Is she always this confused? I'm confused. Well, city cousin, don't let it bother you. It happens to the best of us. Coming from the one who thinks that pencils are made in Pennsylvania? What did I say about making noises out here? Bad, city girl, bad! We're sorry, Grandma Tether. We'll keep it down. La, la, la. <laughs> that does it. Ciao. Oswald, we cannot let her stay in the limo. It's okay. If she gets too cold, she'll come back inside. Hey, really, look on the bright side. Some wild animal will get her long before she gets too cold. Now, uh, that'd be a true Christmas miracle. <laughs> <laughs> I can't shake the 
doing that? We forgot something. Like what, my little sweet potato? Elmer, don't call me that. I ain't no vegetable. I thought you liked it when I called you my sweet potato. No, I like to eat sweet taters. There's a difference. Now let's see. I got the pot of beans. Let's check them their presents. Brenda Mays. Festers. Elkins. Where's Grandma's? Ain't you there? We must have forgotten to buy Grandma a present. Elmer, I gave you one job. You were in charge of the present. I declare, if you, your brain was made a letter, there wouldn't be enough to make a saddle for a June bug. I'm sorry, my little gourd head. Elmer! <laughs> I thought you liked people when I called you my gourd head, but they ain't no vegetables. What are we going to do? We cannot go in that cabin without a present for Grandma. Sorry, Grandma. We's just talking. Well, keep it down, because I got a taping of it. Loud noises will make it fall. What are you two talking about? Oh, about how we forgot your Christmas. Oh, hush. I was just fixing this collar, Grandma. Ain't that better? Yeah. Well, keep it down. Yes, ma'am. We will. What in tarnation was that? It came from over there. Must be a black bear across the ridge. Now keep it quiet. That didn't sound like no black bear to me going to the bay. Now what was we talking about? You don't give me with my collar! Oh, what are we going to do? I've got it! Bessie's cat! Bessie isn't her cow? Yes! Grandma's been wanting a pet to keep her company. That's what we'll get her. We'll keep her company? Elmer, pay attention. I'm confused. Confused is your middle name. No, uh -uh. my middle name is Gertrude. <laughs> <laughs> Elmer, we'll give Grandma Bessie's cat to keep her company. Ah, oh, got it. Whew, that is a relief. Well, I'll I'll go on home and see if it's been born. You go on into the diner and play happy till I can get back. Oh, good luck finding my truck. I'll never know why you decided to paint it camouflage. It took us an hour to find it this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Have you two seen Fester? Uh-oh. Oh, Grandma. Ooh, look at all them presents. Sure puts an old woman in the Christmas spirit. I hope somebody's paying attention when I dropped all them hints this year. Now, Grandma, don't be trying to get us to spill the beans. I'm going to put them under the tree before I head on home. <coughs> Why are you going home? Um, I forgot to put on my makeup. Woo what a relief. <laughs> I thought you were just losing your look. Elmer, come on. Elmer will be along in a minute, Lindsay. I got a favor to ask him. Okay, but don't spill the beans. Oh, don't fret none. I got a nice turn, turn grip on them. I mean, don't let the cat out of the bag. Who put the cat Amber, in the bag? I swear, if you double sure, you'd be about an acre. Now go on, Granny May. I won't ask Elmer nothing about my presence. On my word as a Girl Scout. Okay. <laughs> Quick, Elmer, what's my present? Grandma, you gave your word. Too bad I was never a Girl Scout. <laughs> Give me a hint. Motherhood is a wonderful thing. Mm. Motherhood is a wonderful thing. Give me another hint. Grandma, you're killing me. A bundle of joy will be here before you know it. A bundle of joy will be here? Motherhood? Elmer, are you saying what I think you're trying to say? Nope, just one. See you later, Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> Motherhood, bundle of joy, my little Glenda May is going to be a glory bee. Dear Lord, this is Ima Jean Taylor, and if what I'm thinking is true, give me a sign. <laughs> glory, hallelujah! <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Oh. that sounded a lot closer this time. Brenda May, I don't think these weapons are going to do us much good. 
I should have brought my axe instead. Well, then you're going to hurt it. No, 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 my axe is plenty strong. Not that, the animal. Uh, and what if it hurts us first? Get a rifle, too. Good enough.
she is Ima Jean Taylor. But don't get us confused none with Cheyenne Loudermilk, because she is a Taylor. Why would I get her confused? Because she ain't family, just a neighbor. Well, I thought you said she's a Taylor. She is. I'm confused. <laughs> well, that explains a weird look on your face. <laughs> so she's a Taylor, but not part of the family? That's right. Cheyenne Loudermilk is a Taylor. Well, I thought you said her last name was Taylor. It ain't. It's Loudermilk. So she married a tailor then? Nope, she married a farmer. <laughs> Why do you call her tailor? Cause she makes dresses. Dresses? Oh, she's a tailor. Oh, okay. Well, allow me to start over, Mr. Taylor. You see, my name is George Howard. Nice name. Thank you. So what can I do for you, Howard? George. Elkin! Elkin Taylor, but I am not a tailor. No, I mean that my name is George. George Howard. God. <laughs> Rock a bye, baby, in the treetop. When Santa Claus calls, the cradle will rock. Sorry to make you wait out in the cold, mister. Oh, no, ma'am, that's fine, actually. I'm not here to eat. You see, I'm here to spread the good news to the folks of Crockett County. Cricket, Cricket County. Speaking of good news, I got some myself today. Fester! Grandma, what about your cake? Oh, I done took that out of the oven a long time ago. You can make all the noise your little heart desires. Woo! Where in Sam Hill did that boy run off to? <coughs> Sorry about that, Howard. George. Elkin! <laughs> no, my name is George Howard and I'm from Gary, Indiana. Oh, it sure is cold out on the front porch. I wish I had something to keep me warm. Well, howdy there, stranger. I forgot about you being here sh with strong with those two complete strong arms to keep this country girl warm. Brenda May, this here is Gary George, and he's from Howard, Indiana. <laughs> Actually, my name is George Howard, and I'm from Gary, Indiana. No, sir. It's Brenda May Taylor from Cricket County. No, I'm George. I thought you was Gary. I like that name, Gary. No. I always wanted to marry Gary. <laughs> Do you, Brenda May Taylor, take this somewhat handsome man, Gary, in the Indonesia, to be your lawful wedding husband? No, I'm not Gary. I am from Gary, Gary, Indiana. Hello there, Mr. Indiana. Brenda May, Indiana. I like that. Am I on the Twilight Zone? No, sir. You're on the front porch. Boy, I tell you, I ain't never seen a more confused feller. Come on, let's go. Yeah, I've been. Howdy, everybody. Did you see the ring that Mr. Indonesia gave me? Ain't it the purtiest thing you'd ever did see? Oh, doesn't that just fry your taters? <clears throat> somebody a little bit ago? I was until they went into the diner. Oswald, why don't fellers find me purdy? Uh, careful, Oswald. Now that's a mighty loaded question. I'm sure they, uh, they find you attractive. Attractive? What does that mean? Well, it, I guess it means that fellas, fellas find you to be pretty. Well, his name ain't Fellers. It's Howard or Gary or George or Indigestion. Shoot, I don't know. <laughs> Why would somebody that suffocated like somebody's hillbilly is me? Probably walks all around fancy like saying, somebody go give me some more caviar. All I ever get to say around here is, hey, somebody go jiggle that handle. <laughs> well, 
time, I'm sure it's a matter of time before Prince Charming comes along. Uh, Oswald, strike one. I mean, you're, uh, you're, you're younger than some people I know. Uh, sophisticated. Beautiful. You know, you're real sweet. Uh, strike two. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm sure the right guy has been right under your nose this whole time. And you just didn't even know it. Uh, three strikes, and you're out. You really think so? Sure, it's probably someone you've known for a long time and just didn't know he was the guy for you. Uh, Oswald, uh, the ball game's over. So you see, <laughs> there's no reason for you to be so upset because the right guy's probably within arm's reach and you just didn't know where to look. Uh, see you later, alligator. <laughs> Did you hear that? He called me alligator like it. I'm sure in love with you, Brenda May, a little alligator. And just to think, my Prince Charm has been under my nose this whole time. Sure, like you, you folks in the country say, la la la. <laughs>
need? What do you mean? It's Grandma Taylor. Oh, I don't know how to say this. She, she, she kicked, she kicked the bucket. <laughs> Who told you that? He was just out here. Mr. Was? Mr. Was? Yes, and he was crying, so I asked him what was wrong. And through his tears, his exact words were, Grandma Taylor kicked the bucket. She's got no bad play. Are you sure that's exactly what he said? Yes. Oh, I loved her so much. You two can barely stand each other. Oh, well, Tippenheimer. How did you say such a thing at a time like this? You know what this means, don't you? Yeah, we should uh, probably stop thinking about all the millions she left us in her will. That didn't cross my mind. <laughs> oh, I was thinking of myself, actually. Oh, and to think of all the terrible things I ever said to her. Oh, I wish I could take it all back. Me too. All these years of trying to get our hands on our elderly cousins' inheritance money. We're terrible people, Uncle. Just the worst. Oh. Do you think she left us anything in her will? Well, I guess that'd be nice, but uh, probably shouldn't be thinking about money at a time like this. You're right. Oh. Oh, there you are, little darling. Let me get a good look at you. Yep, you sure are glowing. Well, I did just eat a jalapeno and egg biscuit. Uh, Grandma, why are you limping? Oh, I just kicked the bucket. I'm sorry, Grandma. Well, I better get inside and set the tables. Oh, you don't need to run off and don't be nervous in front of me. I know what my Christmas surprise is. Did Elmer tell you? <laughs> nah, he didn't say a word. <sighs> Dog John, I told him not to say a word. I'm up here. Mm -hmm. But it is such a great miracle in life. Why keep it such a secret? Well, I didn't know myself until a few days ago. When is it due? <laughs> Doc says any day now. What? And you didn't know? How is that possible? Well, Grandma, what with being a wife and slopping the hogs and dumb elder and all that Oh, things. my gosh, Glenda May, you've got to stop doing all them chores this very minute. Let Elmer do it. Uh, Elmer doing chores. Ha, huh, that's a laugh. That's like a pig crowing at dawn. It just ain't natural. Come <laughs> on, child. When it does come, Elmer doesn't want anything to do with it. So it'll be all my responsibility. You don't think so? Yep. He says he won't do nothing. Not nice little Elmer. Yep. He said when it does come, I gotta keep it in the form. I hope you told him no. I sure did. Good for you. I said, Elmer no, Creek, we are not keeping it in the barn. We can keep it in the tool shed. It'll be closer to the house. The tool shed. Let's talk out here where we can get us some fresh air. Boy, it looks like you might be getting some more squirt, some more skunks too. Grandma. Good to see you getting some rest before all your Christmas customers come to town. Grandma? Hello? <laughs> Maybe she's stuck. Tool shed. You're going to keep it in the tool shed. <laughs> I beg your pardon. Plan of me. Yeah. The tool shed. <laughs> Grandma. You've been mashing your corn a little too long again. <laughs> you okay? I better go finish cooking supper. Anyway, you should stick around for our Christmas supper. Every year we have supper and we put on a Christmas nativity play. Well, you see, Mr. Taylor, that's actually why I'm here. I've got something I'd like to share with you. What is this? Well, you see, I am the co-founder of the Church of Global Unity and Political Correctness for a New Generation of Intelligent People Incorporated. The Church of Global... And as you know, it takes many generous gifts to get a new church off of the ground. So, Mr. Taylor, I'm just going to come right out and ask. 
Is it true that you are affluent? No, sir. I'm a Republican. <laughs> no, sir. I mean, somebody told me you are, you know, opulent. Well, after that skunk stew, I was, but I took me some alpha cell, sir. <laughs> no, sir. Are you or are you not a very prosperous man? Now, I'm not normally one to brag, but folks around here have told me I'm pretty good looking. <laughs> sir, do you or do you not have a lot of money? Money? Oh yeah, Uncle Zeke done croaked and he gave us millions. Millions? Like as in dollars? Yeah, he did. But don't let appearances fool you none. You see, he's really just simple, folks. Well, Mr. Taylor, allow me to go ahead and throw it If you would allow us to start a Church of the Global Unity chapter right here in Cricket County, we would educate the whole countryside in the many ways to God. Many ways to God. Take this nativity scene your family will be acting out later this evening. It'll probably show baby Jesus being born in a manger as God's way of showing that Jesus is the way to get to know him. Duh! What if I told you that the Church of Global Unity also teaches that Jesus is only is that Jesus is a way to God? <coughs> That's good. What if I told you the Church of Global Unity also teaches that Jesus is only one of the ways to God? I'd say he's crazy. <coughs> you see, some people believe that doing good works here on earth will get you into heaven, while others believe that we live in heaven here on earth. While others believe that when we die, we come back to something completely different. You know, like reincarnation. You serious? You mean to tell me that when I die, I could come back to something completely different? Yeah, that's correct. Now... You mean to tell me that if I die, I could come back as a pig? No comment. Oh, what a bunch of hogwash. You see, Mr. Taylor, we at the Church of Global Unity believe that all of these ways are true. And it's up to the individual and what he or she chooses to believe. That, sir, is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Excuse me, but are you calling me dumb? Well, sir, if you believe what you just told me, then I would have to say that you weren't the brightest bulb on the Christmas tree. <laughs> sir, I am offended. Sir, I don't care. <laughs> Did you know that nowhere in your fancy little speech there did you mention one little thing about what the good book has to say on the subject? Ah, but which good book? Would that be the Bible, the Torah, our very own self-published book of the Church of Global Unity and Political Correctness for a New Generation of Intelligent People Incorporated, Volume 1? But the Bible... Yeah. The Bible is what you say it is. Some people believe that the Bible is the Word of God, while others believe that the Bible is nothing but a history book. While others believe, well, if you would allow us on the Creek County chapter of the Church of Global Unity, we want to make sure that we are offending anybody and their beliefs. Ah, so you just go around telling folks just exactly what they want to hear. That way you don't hurt anybody's feelings and offend them. Exactly. We believe that it brings rest to everybody's spirit. Now, I've got a pamphlet right here that will explain everything in detail. I don't want it. Take it. No. Take the pamphlet. Watch this. This is me not taking the pamphlet. <laughs> Sir, you should be willing to you should be willing to share your wealth and open people's eyes to the truth. I believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. John 14, 6. I will start by opening your eyes. <laughs> Funny coming from a blind man. There you go, baby. <laughs> Wait, here I go, not a care again.
Look, sir. You wanted to share something with me. Sit. Sit down. Sit. Now I want to share something with you. I want you to stay for supper. I want you to watch our nativity play. And I want you to think about the Christmas story, okay? Oh, Elkin, what are we going to do? We're going to act it out like we do every year. No, I think she means about what happened to Grandma Taylor. <laughs> oh, Pastor Dan told me. <laughs> she, she, she kicked the bucket. <laughs> oh, it was bound to happen sooner or later. <laughs> oh, now, but don't let that ruin us. Don't let that ruin your Christmas fun. Now, Mr. Elton Taylor, you, sir, are a callous, callous man. If you would excuse us, we're actually having a very important conversation here. What is more important than a stubborn old lady changing this mortal life of that is immortality? Who yielded her spirit to its benevolent offering? Who rose upon the horizon of a perfect, endless day? And all this time I thought she just kicked the bucket. <laughs> <laughs> oh! You guys got no worry. You can't keep a spirit like hers down for long. She will be back to her old ornery ways in no time. What? What? <laughs> I'm sorry, Elkinus. City folk don't believe in ghosts. Oh! <laughs> See, I done told you she'd be back. Oh! <laughs> What is going on, Grandma? We thought you we thought you kicked the bucket. Oh, I didn't kick the bucket. Why do you think I'm living in a groaning? Oh. oh, wait, ma'am. You have a lot of money as well. Would you please allow me a moment of your time? No, she will not, sir. Now, you are more than welcome to stay for supper. Watch our nativity play. But I can't let you go showing your fancy little paper around these parts. No more. <laughs> Grandma, I'm confused. Linda May, Linda May, where are you at? What are you doing in that get up? Trying to find Linda May to see if I can borrow her veil for the wedding. Whose wedding? My wedding. Who in the Sam Hill are you getting married to? I'll give you one guess. Um, uh, Oswald, um, uh, yeah, this? Yeah, thanks for that heads up, Pete. <laughs> <coughs> Go on, cousin Oswald. Tell him. Tell him he asked me to marry up with you. Mary, you know we're cousins, right? <laughs> you didn't mean me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forgive you for telling Grandma about her Christmas surprise. I'm sorry, my sweet cherry pie. I just apologize. Elmer, that calf ain't even born yet, and it's already causing us marital hardship. Calf? What calf? The calf we've been talking about all morning, Grandma. Your Christmas surprise. Everybody take that for me. Yeah, actually, I caught, saw its paw was stuck between. 
between two saplings over there. This little thing is what we thought was making all that ferocious wild animal noises. I confused. <laughs> well, How did something so little make a sound so big? Well, it's because it was trapped beside this. This megaphone is what it was making noise out of. That's why it was making so much noise. Now watch this. I'm Are watching. watching? <laughs> okay, here we go, little kitty. Ooh. Wow. See? Boy, that explains the confusion all right. Poor little thing. Talking about confusion, I thought you wanted to marry up with me. Speaking of confusion, I thought Glenda May was having a baby. Speaking of confusion, I thought you guys would be an easy target for my church. Oh, speaking of confusion, I thought Grandma Taylor passed away. Everybody, listen up! It seems that this whole afternoon has been one confusion episode after another. And do you know why? No! Why? Because ain't none of y'all focused on what tomorrow is all about. The baby. Jesus. But like I said, Mr. Taylor. And like I said, Mr. George or Howard or Ignorant or whatever the heck your name is. <laughs> you come around with all your fancy newfangled ideas of how to get to heaven and all. Well, you know what, sir? There is one thing that us folks around here ain't confused about. And that's how the good Lord up in heaven speaks to us human beings through His Son, Jesus. Yeah, that's right. Jesus was born on Christmas night and placed in a manger. Years later, He died on a cross and died three. And three days later, He came back. And one of these days, He's going to come back and take us to heaven to be with Him. Jesus promised that, Mr. Incognito, not Muhammad, not Hooter, not Henry Christina, or anybody else. Jesus promised that. Now, I'll tell you what, mister, if you're still confused, we all love to take you inside the diner and tell you all about the Word, because if there's one thing the good Lord don't like, it's confusion. It says right there, 1 Corinthians 14.33, For God is not the author of confusion. Cut up keys. Amen, family. That old devil, he likes to keep us confused like we've been all day today. Make sure it's easy for him when we're overworked, overwhelmed, and overtired. Too bad Christmas sometimes does that to us. You guys are all nothing but a bunch of closed-minded hillbillies who live in your own little secluded world away from anything or anybody who might think differently than you. So, Mr. Elkin Taylor, you can keep your millions, but I will get my church out here one way or another. So, happy holidays and good night! Look at, look at that, mister, it's real icy out there. Uh-oh, he just ran into my camouflage trunk. Hey, or, 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 are you okay? Leave me alone. <laughs> okay. I better go in and finish the Christmas Eve supper. I sure am proud of you, boy. Okay. La, la, la. I'll come help you, Grandma. The thought of getting married was nice while it lasted. Come on, guys. Let's go help Grandma in the kitchen. If anyone needs me, I'll be in the limo. Now, Mimi, you're already here. You just as well make the best of it. Besides, if you go roaming around out there, you might run into Elmer's pickup. <laughs> it's worth the risk. Merry Christmas, everyone. <laughs> Got two! <laughs> Sure, it is my little honey.
you, Grandma thought we was going to have a baby. La, la. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you are, Glenda May. I thought you might possibly be in here at Grandma's diner. Well, Doc Huckleberry, what in the sand heck are you doing out here? I got some real special news to share with you. I didn't think there'd be any way to wait until after Christmas. You're going to have a baby. Congratulations, you old rascal. I didn't think you had it in you. Thank you, Doc. <laughs> Thank you again. 